Hey, hey, what's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here from GuitarJams.com. Got a Hendrix-style uh, rhythm concept and uh, lesson for you. But let's zoom in and, and going to break this concept down for you, and I think you'll get a lot out of it. I know it's helped me a lot. So enough of that. Let's zoom in and check it out. All right, so I've showed this Hendrix-style uh, rhythm idea before, but I'm going to, you know, go over it again, but then now add another dimension to it. So check it out. Any bar, any major bar chord with the root on the E string, like that, or like this, or hey, hello, pick this one, right? Any one of those that's in a progression that you're playing, you can play that chord, or you can substitute or combine this little concept here. Check it out. So for G, you could go like this. Or you could go. Or. All right, so let me show you that concept first. But then, like I said, we're going to add a dimension to it. So you can think of this bar chord here. So you can think of this bar chord right here. And whenever you see it, you can cover up these two high here, the B and the high E. And then hammer on a whole step up on that B string as you're covering those two like this. So you have this, but you could do this instead. Okay, you could pull it off. You can do anything you can think with it. Okay, so that's the first move. Okay, then middle finger is kind of how I track it, goes to that part of that chord, okay? So look at that. Now, my index is naturally going to that second fret of the G string, which is also a half step lower than where that bar is. So you have this, and you could add this, and then we're going like this, and we're going to hammer on, which would, for right now, we're hammering on to that note of the bar chord. And for G, it happens to be the fourth fret of the G string, so we're holding this little thing. And then we just hammer that ring finger onto that fourth fret of the G string there. Like that. When you put them together, and those fingers that are being added can be pulled off and on in that little. Those clusters. Okay, so let's see here. If I just drum with my looper on that bar chord, so now you can hear it, right? Now watch. cool, huh? Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> anyway, I love that concept. So a few things that I added in there when I started improvising was from that same thing you could, this is a classic R&B thing, you can cover both of them like we were and just hold down both of them, slide it up and back. So 
so what I'm doing is I was just getting my pinky to the root of that bar chord. So it's a G note of a G chord. Hendrix might do a thing where he's holding his thumb on that root the whole time. You know, so you can you get that that droning uh, bass note. A lot of, it's hard for a lot of guitar players, including myself, so I like to just think of that concept. So one other thing to add to what we were already doing there is now I'll just do two chords, and you can see how it starts to get interesting. So I've got a G major chord. And then I'm just going to go to C major. Kind of the standard 1-4 progression. Okay, now I'm going to let that loop. right there. go over that stuff enough really to add to your your cool rhythm chops you know it's always fun to play something other than you know get some get some get some flavor in there right make it pop a little bam <laughs> anyway uh here's the thing that i wanted to expand on if that wasn't enough i'm going to add more to this lesson and here's what it is that same concept can be played over its relative minor chord. So, oh boy, we're getting a little theoretical here. But I've, see, uh, I've had some students that were really good at guitar, but maybe, you know, their theory knowledge was a little behind their actual playing and knowledge in their ear. Um, so the relative major, relative minor is a concept that you know, I think is really important as you start relating to music in general. But so, here's how you do it. You know, the best way to do it is you take that major chord and you just put your pinky on the root. And then the minor third down, which right now, it's actually the open E, because it would be like if this was a fret. So E, so that means that E minor is the relative minor to G major. Huh, I got some mail. Anyway, it's like the yin and yang. They're, they're related to each other, okay? Let's do it with a different one where we don't have to use the open string. C major. Here's a C major. So I put my pinky on the root. It's also how I kind of teach you to plug in the major pentatonic. But So I put my pinky on that major root of C major. And if I want to know what the relative minor is, I go down to here. Oh, A minor. So watch this. The idea I was using for C major that can actually, all that stuff can work over an A minor chord and it gives you a completely different sound and I'm going to show you that right now and I think it's really cool. It's like a two for one. You don't have to learn anything new, just how to, how to use it in a new way. So here's A minor. So 
got the A minor going there. And I know that A minor, okay, minor pentatonic, if that's the root of minor, then its relative major would be right there, and vice versa. So C major is the relative major of A minor. Okay? So I can do C major tricks over A minor. Check it out. another one just so we can work on the concept a little bit. E minor is classic, uh, but let's do B minor because we haven't been in that key yet in this lesson. So I'm going to strum a B minor chord, then I'll show you the thought process again. Here we go. Okay, so we got B minor. Ah, ah, what do I do? Well, minor chord, minor pentatonic. So there's the B note. So the minor is the index, major, the relative major would be that note. If I figured it out, it's a D major. So that means D major tricks are going to work over B minor. Let's hear what it sounds like if I do the chords relative major and minor, and we just play that same concept over both, so you can hear that. And what I mean by that is I'm going to play a progression of G major to its relative minor, which is E minor. So G major to E minor, and then I'm going to use that idea, the same idea, for both chords, and you can hear that. And that's kind of related to, like, modal kind of things. Um, but don't worry about that for this. Here we go. We're going to do uh, E minor to G major, actually. Let's do it that way. Okay, here we go. Add a little character here. up an octave. So what I was doing there was basically it like sounded like a guitar solo, but I wasn't thinking a, a scale that, you know, the notes came from a scale, but I was thinking of that concept, that little chordal concept that we started this lesson with. So uh, just mess with it. And the cool thing is this video is always here. You can just rewind it and keep going over it.